So perhaps the most important question is how long is this going to take? So I really enjoyed learning Japanese and I still do enjoy learning Japanese and I've been going for four years now at this point and I don't want you to be scared of that because I think you should not take that long and that is because I was just very unconfident but it's my first foreign language I'm learning technically and I think honestly it should take you maybe up to two or three years but even then if this number scares you then I think something is wrong because Honestly, I don't think you really want to learn Japanese maybe, but you just want to know the language. Now this is important because if you are making this decision based on how long it is going to take you, then I don't think you really want to learn Japanese because then you want to know Japanese, but you don't want to put in effort to actually learn. And the learning is the process and knowing Japanese is a result. And Honestly, there is no result without the process and so therefore that would be pretty much impossible. And trust me, by the way, if you forget about the time aspect, then you will make progress a lot faster and it'll be way more fun. So I'm going to give you a summary of the process that you will probably go through, at least that's what I've gone through, and then explain on the way what will happen. So first of all, when you don't know anything, you start just like anyone else, you start at zero. So the start is really easy. You think you know a lot, you are new to this language, it is still fun and you start getting overconfident maybe. And at some point you will go all the way up in confidence until you meet the point that is called the Mount of Peak Stupid. And it looks like this. Then at some point you will probably see that there's actually a lot more to learn and it is not as simple as it seems and the more you learn the more that you know that you don't know and your confidence starts to go all the way down up until the bottom of this graph and that is also called the valley of despair. Now, especially when you've been learning for maybe two years at this point, at least in my case, then it is going to be really hard to still be motivated because the language just isn't as interesting as it was once before. So at this point, it is really important that you find a way to make the language uh, engaging again. And manage to do so, then you will start to gain more confidence and gain more knowledge. And you can see in the graph that in this phase, also called the plateau of sustainability, as you keep learning and if you don't give up, you start to learn more and more and more and even though there are a lot of things that you don't know as soon as you know something that at first you didn't understand it'll be really motivating and you'll want to keep going and keep going and you really start to have a decent knowledge of this language and finally you will realize that you actually do know a decent amount of japanese now let me give you some tips for each of these phases so that you know exactly what to do when you reach these points so if you get overconfident at first, then please use that to your advantage and start speaking with native speakers. Even though it is a little early in the journey, it doesn't really matter because the practice is good. And in my experience, confidence is going to hold you back later on, especially when you find yourself in the valley of despair. So really try to speak and get as much practice as you can while you're still new in this language. If you are in this valley, then you really need to find a way to motivate yourself because that is what is going to get you out of this valley of despair. And I think the best way to do that is social interaction. So talking with people, as I said before, but also trying and listening and reading native material, because when you actually start to understand that, even though it's a little bit, it really boosts your motivation. Also, I can't stress enough the importance of just practicing with native speakers, not just because it's speaking practice, but also because it's um, practicing your fluency and fluency development, because Knowing the language and learning is totally different than trying to speak on the spot when you are talking with somebody and you have to make up sentences on the spot. Now if you're me and you really don't apply the knowledge that you learn through books or etc into speaking and chatting with other people then you might end up in this loop where you find that oh you know this is actually really different than learning and therefore you will lose confidence and then you find out that you know i should actually learn more than i do right now and you, you lose even more confidence and this way it's like a spiral that goes down until you realize that also the speaking part and the chatting part with other people is also a skill in itself which you also have to learn from start now let's actually talk a bit more about what's inside the language so the grammar the speaking listening etc starting off with grammar and i think the grammar is obviously really hard uh, because Japanese is a hard language in terms of grammar. For example, if you just take one minute of any Japanese text, actually I found a blog here and if we look at the first, the very first sentence of this blog and we try to 
translate it into English and just see how the Japanese works and how the English works, then you can see that it is totally different. First of all, the syntax is the other way around, which is most noticeable in this language. But also there are parts that in English does just really don't exist and only in Japanese exist. So let's try to translate this and you'll see what I mean. So in Japanese the sentence says Kanji to eba chukoku kara tsutawatta kita mono desu yo ne And if we translate that directly into English it would literally mean something like Kanji, if you say China from introduced game thing is nuance, nuance. And with nuance I mean those are just things that add, add extra nuance in Japanese. Now this grammar is totally different from English and as I said some things are in Japanese and have no equivalent in English at all. So if you want to try something that is completely new and completely different than English then I would definitely say give this a shot. It is hard but over time it gets easier and you get used to it so I would say definitely try. Also my tip for grammar is if you get stuck on something most important thing is that you move on and keep studying. Now, as for reading, I think this might be even harder than grammar because, as you know, in Japanese there are these kanji, right? These Chinese characters. And what often happens is, as you're reading, you will encounter different kanji. And you have to be prepared to, 9 out of 10 times, not understand anything about what you're reading. And that is not a joke. <laughs> I mean, that's serious. So what helps is learning the meaning of the kanji itself. So learning kanji by, its, by themselves. But I don't think you should learn them out of context. So let me give you an example here. These two kanji that you see right here could both be pronounced say and say. So that's the same pronunciation. The only way to find this out is through context. You really have to know what sentence this is used in and then you'll know, oh, this probably means this. But that's not it because also one kanji can have multiple meanings. So for example, this first kanji that I showed that means star can be read say, but it can also be read hoshi. And this other kanji that means life can be read say but it can also mean to be born to live and it can be read tons of ways i'll show you a list of all the all the readings and it's absolutely insane and again the only way how to find how you know that which way it is read is through context so through the other words in the sentence and if you understand those then you'll know how to read this kanji as well so that's why it's very important to learn kanji in context and not just learn them by putting them into an app and then learning them without context essentially so if i were to rate this uh, grammar section of japanese then in terms of difficulty definitely five out of five but i have to say once you do know a couple of kanji and you start reading and actually understanding them then it is it feels so satisfying i really can't explain that feeling so now let's move on to the vocabulary, which is kind of similar and has to do with kanji as well. Um, let's take an example of famous app Anki that many people use to memorize uh, vocabulary. Now I personally don't like Anki and I like to use my own method and I will give you an example of what I mean. So Anki is a Japanese word and it means memorization. So these two kanji, so this word is made up out of two kanji and the first one means darkness and the second one means to write something down. And in this context, you read these kanji as ang and ki. And together, they mean anki or memorization. And this actually makes sense because if you think about it, if you memorize something, you are essentially writing it down somewhere deep in your brain, right? In the, into the darkness. And so you have a little story or context and it will be way more easier to remember this meaning once you know this little story, this context around it. But I have to say that learning vocab in Japanese is way different than in any other language because in any other language you would just learn the word and then you would know what it means but since there's kanji in japanese it is totally different for example so imagine if you're reading a sentence and then you encounter a word that you don't know so chances are that it is written in kanji so here's what happens first you have to know the meaning of the kanji and then you have to know how this kanji is read so even though you might know what the, the, the kanji means you still don't know how to read it but sometimes you do know a kanji you know the meaning but you don't know how to read it and then you have two options you can either skip it because you know what it means so you can probably guess the meaning of the sentence and i highly recommend that you do look up the reading of this kanji as well and like i said as you get better you can learn from japanese books or maybe even series or watch native material and in this case this material is the context so that's why it is way better to learn from native material oh yeah and if i had to rate this in terms of difficulty it would definitely be a five out of five but also once you do get the hang of it and you start being able to read some words it is really satisfying as well 
So let's move on to listening. And first of all, I want to say that if you're just starting out, you might be watching some beginner material. But then as you start watching native material, those are really two different things. Because the way Japanese works is there is different formality levels, for example. So maybe this is a bad example, but it feels like this in English. So let's take this one sentence and then rewrite it a couple of times. So first there's, could you please give me that, like very formal. And then there's, can you give me that, which is still polite. You can also just say, give me that. Or you can say, give me that, which is something you wouldn't say to a stranger probably. So in Japanese, you are probably going to learn the most formal way of speaking. And the thing is that if you are learning this for a year, then when you, when you start learning the other way of Japanese and you start listening to that, it is completely different. Not completely, but it is a different story. Now, if you're starting out, you're probably going to be learning formal Japanese. And the thing is that maybe you've been learning formal Japanese for a year, but what will happen is that, at least what happened for me, is that I started watching series in Japanese. And in series, when two friends talk to each other, the way they speak is so much different than the way you were taught in uh, in the textbook, the formal Japanese. And the, the contractions and just the way of speaking is totally different. Oh, and by the way, for very formal speech, there is exactly the same thing. Let's take this uh, example from before. So if you would say that in very formal Japanese, it feels like they're saying, I would really be grateful if you can please do this for me, please. And just hearing that and then comparing it to the other ways of saying it in Japanese is again, totally different. So be aware of that when you are listening to native material. Actually, I would give listening a four out of five because it is not really difficult because the language itself is very clear and easy to listen to. Because when the formality, for example, changes, then it, is, it gets a bit tricky to listen and it'll be a little harder to understand sometimes. As for the speaking aspect of Japanese, that is just a whole other thing. And honestly, I would say I, I suck at it because I waited with speaking until the very last moment. It's up until recently that I started speaking. Um, so recently I have an italki lesson and I did some daily conversation, which ended up okay. The understanding for me was really not that difficult, but speaking and just coming up with sentences on the spot is really difficult, especially when you haven't been practicing that before. So again, really practice your speaking. But also I think this is a really different skill because it involves other people, social interaction. And I feel like Nowadays, some people are really struggling with social interaction and just way easier to just grab a textbook and just start reading because you don't need any, anyone else. You can just do your own thing, right? But you can get stuck in that phase. Then you end up shooting yourself in the foot in the end because you'll realize that there's another skill that you haven't learned at all. And as I said, you have to learn from the bottom how to speak and that could be kind of frustrating. So please practice your speaking. And also, as I said before, I think social interaction is really the best way to get motivation. So if you even get a small conversation going and you will you will feel how motivating that is. So please try and practice your speaking with native speakers. We, you have the internet, so you can just go onto a website like italki or even for free, like Hello Talk, these apps. You can just practice with other people. You didn't have to speak from the start. You can just type or chat with other people. And then when you feel like it, try to have a conversation. Now finally, I have to mention that if you're trying to learn Japanese, then you will encounter a whole other culture. And that is important to mention because language is also intertwined in the culture, especially in Japanese. For example, you know, Japanese culture is known for being very polite, etc. Well, you can also find this in the language. For example, oftentimes uh, people, Japanese people just leave out a thing in a sentence or a thing just gets om omitted because they don't want to say it or they feel like it's way too direct. And that is something that when you first start learning, you really don't understand. And it feels like maybe they are, the, the sentence feels incorrect, but in Japanese it is totally fine. And these are just small things that you only really learn once you learn about the culture as well. So just be prepared for those things. And even though I made it sound in this video like Japanese is a difficult language, it really is, but it is so different. And I would highly recommend that you give it a try and try to learn Japanese for yourself because it is really fun. And, and again, don't worry about the time, just have fun with it. That is the best tip I can give you. Have fun and take it one step at a time and you'll definitely make progress. So with that being said, thank you for watching. Bye-bye. Hello, my name is Adam. I'm the general manager of the Mayfield, the luxury new care home opening in Whitby in January. We are recruiting brilliant staff for the following roles. Care, activities, housekeeping, dining 
in maintenance. If you share our values and want to be part of our growing family, please apply today.